So we've been able to access the properties of x and y. So let's actually start manipulating some of the values so we could overwrite the values that we've placed in Flash. So if you remember, if I run this again, you'll see that the output for x and y is 43 and 39. And the circle is positioned at those coordinates on the, uh, in the Swift file. If I want to change a property, what I'm going to use is the assignment operator. An assignment operator is just a fancy name for the equal sign, where I'm going to take these particular statements and then actually assign a value to them. This is the exact same thing as if going, I was going into the properties panel and overriding the values that I had placed in there. So let's do this. Let's take the x and y coordinate that we, uh, the trace statements that we already have here, and let's add some, uh, some other action script here that will allow us to overwrite these values. When I'm going to overwrite a value, I want to access the instance of that particular object. So I'm going to use my circle, and I want to overwrite the x property. I'm going to use dot x. Instead of just using that, I need to use the equal sign or the assignment operator to give it a value, to assign a value to that particular property. So I'm going to press the equal sign and then overwrite this value. Let's position it at 200. I can do the same thing with the y property. So my circle dot y equals, let's say, we'll make that 100. So now if I run this, you'll, if I if, if I run this, you'll see that now the circle is at a different location. If you notice, though, the output panel is still showing the original location. That's because in Flash, I've defined the original location as 43 by 39. In ActionScript, I'm actually overwriting that and saying that the new position is 200 and 100. Let's take those two lines that I have at the top and let's replicate them at the bottom just to, sh just to prove that it's doing what I, what I claim. I'm going to paste this at the bottom. So now I'm going to trace the original position. I'm going to reposition the object and then output that new position uh, to the output panel. So now you see that the, the object is still at the new position. It's saying that when I started, it's at the 43 by 39. I move it to 200 by 100, and then it's outputting the 200 and 100 position in the output panel. Now you might wonder, well, why is it not showing the original position? Everything that we do in ActionScript, unless we tell it to stop or pause, happens instantaneously. So there actually is no time for it to show the 43 by 39. As you'll find, we'll actually start using uh, event handlers like creating timers, where you can actually then start building animations using ActionScript. The other thing that you can do is you can use the timeline to create the animations as well. So in the next episode, we're going to start learning how to use ActionScript to actually dynamically place objects on the stage. So now we can create Flash files without having to position anything on the stage ourselves and use the library to dynamically create objects.